Hi everyone, it's Karen from the Geordie Grandma. Welcome back to my channel. It feels like ages since I did a video um, and I think it was before Christmas. I took a little bit of a break from YouTube to concentrate on some other things, uh, work kind of things. But I think I've got those well on the way to doing something now. So I thought I'd come back and start um, doing videos again. So I hope everyone's well. I hope everyone's um, powering through this lockdown. Hopefully the last one. I had my um, vaccine jab last week uh, because I'm type 2 diabetic. I got mine um, earlier than some people my age. Uh, for those who are new to my channel, I'm a 57 year old grandma from Gateshead, hence the title of the YouTube channel, The Geordie Grandma. Um, so hopefully the getting the vaccine, I can see a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. Um, I, just, I just can't wait for things to get back to normal. Um, and it was such a lovely weekend. This weekend just gone, it was sunny and you know, people were in the park and it just felt like spring was coming and it just gave you hope, didn't it? Well, I hope it did anyway. So anyway, today's video is my February favourites. I've got quite a few things to go through, bit of a mix of stuff. Um, so I'll just get cracking and tell you what they are. The first thing I've got for you is probably my favourite product of the whole year. And it is this little, it's an HDMI adapter. Wait till I get it out of the packet. I should have done this earlier. Um, it's just this. It's a little HDMI adapter. And what I got it for was, I've got a television in my bedroom on the wall and it's one. It's on one of those arm things so your TV swings out uh, so you can watch it and then you can push it back against the wall when you're finished watching it. But what was happening was, I've got a fire stick in the back of the telly so I can watch the different you know, apps in my bedroom, so Netflix and all that kind of thing. And if you've got a TV, if you've got one of those um, sticks, you'll know that it kind of, so he, here's your TV, and I don't know if you can see that properly, there's the TV and the stick kind of sticks out the back. So fine when I've got the TV pulled out to watch it, but when I was pushing the TV back, it was bending the fire stick. Now. I had been using it probably for about maybe six months, maybe even a year really. Um, and it stopped working. The fire stick just wouldn't work. I couldn't get it to come on. And I suddenly realised, well I didn't suddenly realise, it took us a while to realise, that it was the HDMI socket in the back of the TV. As I was pushing the TV back, the fire stick was kind of bending and it was knocking the HDMI socket out of shape, so the fire stick was loose. So when I was trying to watch it, it mustn't have been connected properly, so it, I just couldn't get it to work. So I thought to myself, I wonder if I can get an adapter. So I looked on Amazon and I found this little thing. Um, it's simple really, probably other people know about it. Uh, you just, you plug it into your TV, so there's the TV, you plug it into your TV like that, the fire stick plugs in that way. So instead of the fire stick sticking out, it comes from this plug and it's sort of flat to the back of the TV. I hope, I hope that makes sense. Um, so it's flat to the back of the TV. So when I found this and I plugged it in, I did have to wiggle it around a little bit in the socket because like I say, it's knocked the socket out of shape a little bit, I think. So I had to wiggle it a little bit and it came on. Um, and fingers crossed, I've had it for about, probably had this for about four months now and it's working perfectly. So if anybody's got a TV that is flat to the wall, you know, fixed to the wall, these are ideal if you're using a, um, some kind of TV stick, because I know you can get more than Amazon Fire Sticks. And I think these, are, there was two in the pack and I'm sure they were only six pound, but fabulous. Definitely highly recommend those. The next thing I wanted to mention is uh, it was a drawing class. Now I've mentioned before that I subscribed to something called the Book It Home Box uh, and I did a video on it a few months ago. I'll link it below uh, if you want to have a look. And what, you, what happens is you subscribe to this box 
and you get five activities every month usually three of them are physical items so things like um, the stuff to make your own face masks with or I think I got a glass painting kit um, I've got a, a, a big cake to make um, but two of the things each month are usually an online class of some sort I've had a mandarin class which was quite fun um, I've got a wine tasting class coming up uh, but this one was a drawing class and I thought okay a drawing class I can't draw rubbish or anything like that but sounds interesting and um, we'll, we'll do it so it was they're, they're one hour classes and they're online you just sign up and you, you don't have to have your camera on um, but you can keep putting it on and off you know if you want to show the instructor something you've done so what we had to do was she had she made we she got us to draw 12 squares a, a box with 12 squares uh, and then everybody got a turn of picking a box and it would reveal something in the box that you had to draw so the picture was revealed bit by bit so you only were drawn piece by piece of the picture you didn't really know what it was until the end uh, this was a jug of grapes with a pear now this was my effort don't know if you can see that <laughs> it's not brilliant somebody my daughter said she thought it was a chicken on a telephone not quite sure I was it no she thought it was a chicken and somebody else actually thought it was a cow on a telephone I don't get the cow on the telephone I can see where she gets chicken from but I really enjoyed that I, it was a lot of fun to do the Mandarin one I did was was fun but it wasn't as fun as the drawing i really did enjoy that and if there was a class where you got something different to draw i would definitely try it and i highly recommend the book at uh, homebox actually if you're looking for activities to do you know while you're bored if you can see something in the background here it's my little cat and she seems to be having a bath um but that was the drawing class so it's book at home and the drawing class was by artist and i think that was what the company was called but i'll link them below anyway but I highly recommend that it was a lot of fun the next few things are some uh, makeup and beauty products the first thing i wanted to mention was the revolution eye bright and this is the illuminator um so you put it under your eyes it's like a concealer brightener kind of thing i'm actually wearing it today uh i think this was i'm sure i think it was 10 pound might have been a bit less roughly around there but it's revolution uh it comes with a little what do you call it, a little sponge applicator you twist the bottom and it it comes up i'll just put some on my hand so you can see there's the the product and I, th I think this is a really good product I really like this I've tried a, a few different under eye highlighters concealers and this is my favorite so far and one of the reasons I like this one is because when you go on the revolution website uh, and you go to buy this product it's got a drop down list of all of the makes of foundation that you might wear and it's got quite a lot in there um, so you can match this to the foundation you're wearing so I actually matched this to a body shop foundation I've got uh, so it matches as it matches your color quite well uh, I was really impressed by that uh, I think a lot of sites should do that you know because it, it's difficult sometimes when you're buying makeup online to get the colors right and of course once you've bought a, a makeup item you can't return it if you, you know if once you've opened it and used it you can't return it so i really like that idea of matching it to my foundation uh, but yeah I, I highly recommend that um i think it's done a decent job of uh brightening my under eyes up and concealing the dark circles so yeah i like that and while i was on their website as well as getting that i got the the um makeup revolution what's this called it's illuminating powder you kind of put it over the what did I just call it you put it under the under eye illuminator that's the word I'm looking for and it's just it's white powder I have used a powder um, under my eyes before with a concealer but it's never really worked very well it's 
very well it's always looked a little bit cakey but this one works really well and I was quite surprised because it is so pale but it just seems to set it um, and it doesn't settle into your to your wrinkles or anything like that well I, I don't think it did anyway if you look too closely it might but I was quite impressed with that and I, I think that was about maybe seven pound I want to say revolution makeup's not very expensive and it, it is really good I, I'll use a lot of revolution makeup so I highly recommend that I just want to do a quick fail of the month here um, while I'm on makeup and my fail unfortunately is the Stila hide and chic fluid foundation now this cost me 31 pound um comes in a nice nice bottle i now i bought this because i saw angie from hot and flashy recommended it but she has oily skin and i've got dry skin so maybe that's why it doesn't work so well for me but i was really unimpressed with it um it's got a pump 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 action thing but what I don't like about it is, it is very, very runny. You can see there, very runny. Now it does say on their website, even though it's runny um, and it, it's kind of light, that it's got good coverage. I'm wearing it today and I, I don't know if you can, how well you can see it in this light, but the coverage is terrible. I've got a couple of um layers what do you call it layers couple of applications of it on so i put it on and then i put it on again and i just don't feel like it it covers because when you when i put foundation on what i wanted to do is blank out my skin so take away all of the you know the little um maybe reddish bits i've got or uh, you know the imperfections i mean it's not going to work miracles obviously but to take away the little little imperfections so you've got a base to put the rest of your makeup on but i just felt even after two applications it didn't really cover and i do have cheaper foundations um you know the foundations i've paid under a tenner for that do what i want the the blank me face blank me face out you know what i mean um but i was just really disappointed with this especially considering it was 31 pound because that's quite a lot for me to spend on a foundation um, I don't know whether I was expecting too much from it, but it just shows you that even though you're watching somebody else on YouTube recommend a foundation, everybody's got different skin. So what works well on one person isn't going to work well on another. But unfortunately, I can't recommend Stila Hide and Chic. So that was my fail of the month. The next thing, well, the next two things are also beauty products. And the first one is a face scrub. And this is called Up Circle. Uh, this was in a Pipbox advent calendar that I got for Christmas off my daughter. And the face scrub was in one of the days. Um, and it's made with repurposed coffee grounds. And it's a citrus blend. Now, I wasn't... Um, I wasn't holding out much hope for it. It says coffee face scrub formulated for dry and dehydrated skin, which is me. I've got dry dehydrated skin and it's got rose hip, sweet orange and lemon verbena essential oils mixed with the repurposed coffee grounds. I'm not quite sure how they repurpose coffee grounds. Does the company collect up all of the, the, the coffee percolator grounds from the staff and then put them in a scrub? I don't know. But this is fantastic. I really, really like this. It does just what it says. It really hydrates your skin. It makes my skin feel so soft. Um, it gives it a bit of a glow afterwards. And it smells gorgeous. It does smell of coffee. But you get that citrus smell as well. So it's, re it's so refreshing on a morning. It's like having a cup of coffee and a glass of orange juice while you're in the shower. Uh, yeah, I really like it. I'm just going to put some on my finger so I can show you what it looks like. So it does look like coffee grounds and it is very, very scrubby. And I'm never sure what you what you um, you um call that. It's a very good exfoliator for your skin. Um, and I'm, because it smells so nice, I think I'm maybe scrub my face for a bit too long with it. <laughs> but it just smells gorgeous. I'm not sure how much this is to buy on its own like i say it was in an advent calendar 
but if I can find it, I'll put a link in the box below so you can go and have a look at it. Definitely recommend Upcircle Face Scrub. The next product is a body scrub, so staying on the same theme. And I don't know if I've mentioned this before in a previous video, but I really love this, so it's definitely worth another mention. And this is um, Sunday Rain Akai Berry Body Scrub. That's what it looks like. And it's a pink, again, it smells gorgeous. I think this is about my third tub of this and I just love it. It's it's not terribly exfoliating, so it's not a really harsh scrub, but it, it does the job and it, it looks like that. So it's like a buttery, a buttery scrub consistency. It just smells beautiful and it leaves your skin very, very soft. Um, again, with a bit of a glow to it. It just, it does, because a lot of scrubs you put on uh, and you rinse and your skin doesn't feel any different. But this one really does, really, really like that. I tried the Sunday Rain, they've got a body scrub cube, uh, a watermelon one, and I don't like those as much. Well, in fact, I don't like them at all. I don't like cubes for a start, because they're a faffy to use. Um, and it made my skin feel quite quite dry you know you, you know when you rub your hand up your arm and it, it feels smooth after using the watermelon cube my hand like stuck <laughs> it was just it wasn't good so I, d I didn't like that but this sunday rain sunday rain sunday rain akai berry body scrub highly recommend and i'm sure that's only about six or seven pound as well so those were the beauty products the next thing i wanted to mention is actually for children but you may have grandchildren, you may have small children of your own, so I thought I would show them because I was highly impressed. And they're stickers. Yep, stickers. Um, children love stickers. Well, my grandchildren love stickers. Harriet Nashon can spend a good half hour sticking stickers on pieces of paper. Uh, and that's what they look like. And when, that, when they're that small, my grandkids are uh, four and two, when they're that small, they don't want to do anything kind of artistic with stickers. They just literally want to peel the sticker and stick it on a piece of paper. So you can actually get through quite a lot of stickers. But what I liked about these ones, I'm just going to take these out of the packet. What I like about these ones is they're called 3D stickers. Um, so that they're, they're raised, they feel spongy. You get, I think there was about, I want to say 500 stickers in the pack and there were only 5 99 and they're all really nice. So I've got some, some animal ones, there's some vehicle ones, um, I've got fish, there's some hearts there, uh, some more vehicles. So an, enough of a variety to keep, you know, any child entertained. Um, but what I liked about them was because on ordinary stickers they stick them on the paper that's it they're gone they're stuck you throw the paper out or they're stuck on the wall and you can't get them off what i like about these ones is you can use the sticker and then you can peel it back off the paper and you can stick it back on the the cellophane thing and keep the packet and then they can use them again i thought that was brilliant i'm not sure if that was a uh, um, accidental thing or whether they're meant to be able to to peel them back off and use them again or not but I was very impressed with that uh, so when my grandchildren come to stay in the play with stickers me and Warren spend about half an hour well mainly Warren spends about half an hour afterwards peeling all the stickers back off the paper and sticking them back on the cellophane to use again but I think they're lovely um, and I think you could even use them you know, if you make cards or something, particularly for children, they would be great to, to put on children's cards. So then when the child gets the card, they can peel the stickers off and then they can use them on something else. So I'm well impressed with those stickers. So if you've got children, highly recommend. The next thing I wanted to mention is actually a video on YouTube. And this is a YouTube channel uh, called well the lady is called Joanna So and she is a, an exercise person guru and I found her by accident uh, just a couple of weeks ago I've been walking a lot well I've seen a lot I've just started walking after it started you know after it stopped snowing 
I've been going out walking. Uh, and there's been, there was a few days where the weather was horrible and I'm thinking, oh, I'm not going to get any walking to do today. And I'm thinking, I wonder if there's any YouTube videos I can do instead. So I found this one by accident and it's called um, the 10,000 Steps Indoor Challenge. And what it is, it's a 30 minute workout where you're just, you're walking on the spot and she sticks in a few, you know, so you do 30 seconds of walking on the spot, then there's 30 seconds of a, a kind of walking exercise where you bring your knees up or kick your legs back or go to the sides and wave your arms around and things like that. And I really enjoyed that. It, I, th I thought that was a brilliant workout. I, I don't like, you know, ordinary workouts where, you know, you got to get on the floor and, you know, jump around the room like a mad person. I'm not keen on those kind of things. Even Joe Wicks, I'm not keen. But this walking one, I really enjoyed. And the idea is that it helps you towards your 10,000 steps a day. Um, and I think, um, I've got a Fitbit, which I'm gonna talk about later. Uh, I'm trying to get to 10,000 steps a day. So I think I did this, doing this video, I did about 6,000 steps. So I was quite impressed. So that is a good chunk of your 10,000 steps a day. So I'll put the link to her channel down below because I highly recommend that. If you like walking, but it's, you know, it's a horrible day and you can't get out, then this is ideal. I might as well mention the Fitbit next because I've already spoken about it. I got myself a Fitbit. Um, the reason I got this was, I signed up for, sounds a bit morbid, sound, signed up for a funeral plan for myself and Warren. Um, not planning on dying, but you've got to have a funeral plan because they're really expensive. So it said once you'd been paying for six months, they would send you a £110 voucher to spend. Um, but they came in the post three months and they said, oh, we've given you them early. And I'm thinking, do they know something? I, I don't. Am I going to die soon or <laughs> whatever? But anyway, I got them three months early. So I thought, oh, I wonder where I can buy with £110. And I'd been thinking about a Fitbit. So I bought myself a Fitbit with the voucher. So it didn't actually cost me anything. And I wasn't very sure if I was going to get a lot of use out of it um, or whether it was going to be worth it, which is one of the reasons I didn't buy it with my own money. But I'm really liking it, I'm really enjoying it, and I'm finding it useful for, well, to see if I can get to 10,000 steps a day. It was amazing, actually, how many steps I wasn't doing. So the first couple of days I had it on, I was just doing what I would normally do, which is working in the house, obviously, which is what I do even when there's no pandemic. Um, I don't really go out very, you know, very often through the day, so all I'm doing is I'm in the house. And I was lucky if I was doing 1,000 steps a day. Um, which is terrible. So it was useful for that, which I probably knew anyway. Um, but what I th what it does is you can set it to remind you to move. So like, I think it's usually at about 10 to the hour, it'll buzz and it'll say, you know, get another 250 steps in, you know, and it'll make you do something. So you get up and move. And I found that quite useful for that because uh, it does prompt us to move which sounds stupid because you know you can prompt yourself to move but I don't so I thought it was really handy for that um, it does your heart rate which I'm not really interested in that bit so much but it also has a zone thing so it tells you when you're exercising in a certain zone where your heart rate goes up because apparently that's the best cardio exercise when your heart rate goes up you're working harder so you're burning more calories um, so it, it tells you when you're doing that uh, and I have reached the 10,000 steps on at least three days um, so I was really chuffed with that and it's prompting us to actually go out and find on some longer routes when I'm doing me walking so I can get the 10,000 steps in so it's getting to like you know, seven o'clock at night and I've only done 9,500 steps and I'm kind of running up and down the stairs and jogging around the sitting room just to reach that 10,000 um, steps and then I get fireworks going off on the Fitbit. There's other things a Fitbit does, but I'm taking it step by step so I'm not going to overwhelm myself. So I'm learning a little bit each week about it. Uh, I know you can also sync it with an app called My Fitness Pal where you can put your daily calories and stuff in um, so you can sync it with that. But that was my Fitbit, really liking that this month. The next thing is a magazine. I love magazines. Um, I used to buy lots of them, but as I've got older, I found that magazines don't suit me. Um, so a lot of the magazines are for younger women. 
um, you know, there's a lot of younger clothing and younger storylines and not storylines, articles, you know what I mean. And I'm not keen on those, uh, like the chat magazine and, and you know, those kind of celeb story magazines. Don't really like that. I did like Woman and Home, but it was a bit hitty missy for me on whether the articles were relevant to me and my life. And then I found this and it's called Platinum. Uh, this is the third month I've bought it. Um, it's usually four seventy five, but I got it for two ninety nine this month, and it's just it's it's got loads of great stuff in. Um, it's got really good uh, style pages, and there's quite a few of them. There's a little bit of cookery in there, which I'm <laughs> not great at. Um, there's loads of health stuff. I think you know books to read and holidays to go on, and I just really like the magazine. I just think it's so interesting and most of the articles are relevant to me. Um, they've got a, I don't know if I can find the page. It's called Platinum Live and it's on on Friday the 26th of March at 3pm and they've got, it's free, so you can register for free and it's got fitness advice and uh, behind the scenes fashion, wine tasting, creating a hanging basket, it's got a cookery masterclass and it's got a health chat. Uh, that's it there. I just thought it was, I think that'd be really interesting, you know, not doing anything else that day. So I registered for it um, and I'm looking forward to doing that, a virtual afternoon of learning stuff. So that should be fun. But yeah, I highly recommend the Platinum Magazine if you're a, a woman over 50, my, or women of a certain age, um, and you're looking for something that's, you know, down to earth, it's not too, what I would call, arty forty and highbrow, then I highly recommend the Platinum Magazine. The next thing I wanted to mention was a TV programme, uh, and it's called Staged, and it features David Tennant and Michael Sheen, and I absolutely loved this. There's two series of it. I think the first one's on Netflix, but both of them are on the BBC iPlayer, if you've got that. Uh, the two series, six episodes each. And I think they're only about 20 minutes each episode. I just found it highly entertaining and very funny. It's basically about, they're playing themselves, but it's like a fictional story. They're supposed to have been, you know, before lockdown, they were supposed to have been rehearsing this play to do in the West End, um, but because of lockdown, they can't do it, but the director has decided that they'll do it online over Zoom. So all of the episodes are set on Zoom. Um, so you see in, in, into the, you know, David Tennant and Michael Sheen's houses, both of their wives are in it, obviously all playing themselves, but fictional. Um, and it's just hilarious. The, the interaction between David Tennant and Michael Sheen is just brilliant. It is, they work so well together. I did see them together in uh, Good Omens, which I really enjoyed. So if you like David Tennant and you like Michael Sheen, I think you really enjoy it. It's um, it's just such a, an easy watch and, you know, 20 minute episodes, uh, definitely worth a look. So highly recommend Staged. The, ne the next couple of things I want to mention are food. Um, and, and the first one is a chocolate bar and it is the Milky Way Crispy Roll. I've just discovered these, bought them for the grandkids, but I've been eating them. Well, not all the time, but I have had a couple. Um, these come in a pack of five and they're only 99 pence. I got them in Aldi and you get two bars in the packet and they're really nice. You know when you're just craving something chocolatey um, or a biscuit even because they're, they're like crispy inside. They do the job really well. Uh, like I say, they were 99 pence for five, so well worth it. And I think there's 120 calories in the whole pack. So not not terribly high in calories um and they're just they're just really nice so i highly recommend those and the other thing is um not sweet it is i don't eat meat if you've watched my videos before i don't eat meat i do eat fish but i don't eat meat um and i've really missed baking sandwiches and if you've tried vegetarian bacon before you know it's absolutely disgusting it doesn't taste like bacon it doesn't look like bacon it tastes like plasticine so it's been a bit of a, a long haul i've been not eating meat for about five years now maybe six 
and I've never found one that I liked until recently and it's called This Isn't Bacon uh, and they're plant-based rashers high in protein vitamin B12 and iron and proudly GMO free um, it's called This Isn't Bacon and it's not bacon um, obviously it doesn't you know it's not exact if you're looking for an exact substitute of bacon you're not going to get it but this this comes a close second it's got a nice it's got a nice taste it doesn't taste like plaster seam if you make it crispy it's got a nice texture it works well in a sandwich it works well you know like chopped up in a salad or if you wanted to make like a vegetarian carbonara it works well in that so i think these were I think it's three pound a pack and you get quite a few i think you get about 12 rashers in there um i'm not entirely certain maybe eight or 12 rashers i'm sure it's 12. so there's, there's quite a lot in there um and yeah i highly recommend it actually if you're looking for a vegetarian bacon um i definitely recommend you try it like i said it's not exactly bacon but it's probably the best you're going to get if anybody's had another vegetarian bacon that they think is exactly like bacon then let us know in the comments below because i'd be interested to try it so that's the the bacon i think those are all of the things on my favorites and my one fail for february the only other thing that i wanted to mention is in the last couple of favorites videos i did before christmas um i've shared a photo that i really liked that month um and this one that i'm sharing is my two grandchildren, Ashton and Harriet, like I said before, they're four and two, and this is them splashing in puddles. And the reason I like this photo is they're just having so much fun in it, and it's such a simple thing, splashing in a, in a puddle, you know, and they're really entertained by it, and you, you can see the joy in their faces just from jumping in this puddle. And I think this photo reminds us that, you know, it, it's hard at the minute, it's hard to find, you know lots of joy or you know in a lot of things but if you look at this photo and you think if these two little children can find joy in splashing in a puddle i'm sure there's something that i can find joy in as well maybe i'll go and splash in a puddle so i hope you like that photo too because i love it so that's everything i've got for you for my february favorites i hope you enjoyed the video um, and I'll hopefully back again next week with a different video, something else. I'm not sure what yet, um, but I'm going to try and do something regularly again. Uh, that's all I've got for you for now. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again really soon. Bye for now.